We are the Museum of Food and Drink. We had a space in New York, but since the pandemic hit, we have been doing everything virtually, um, which basically means all of the programs. We have been doing lots of virtual programming since May. So probably some of you have been to other programs and it's great to have you back. We just really, really appreciate your support um, during this difficult time when we don't have a museum space open. So, um, like I said, you can keep your cameras on for those of you that are just joining. If you want to participate in home and cook along, uh, Pooja would love to see you do that. If not, you are totally welcome to keep your cameras off. I do want to let you know that I am recording this program. So, you know, we will be posting it probably on the MOFAD website. So just to let you know that if you decide to keep your cameras on. Um, the only other thing I want to say is that uh, we do virtual programs pretty much every week here. I hope that you will sign up for our newsletter. If this is the first time you've come, we'd love to welcome you back. And the best way to stay in touch with us is through our newsletter. So I am going to send you an email tomorrow uh, reminding you to do that. And I will make sure to share lots of information that's covered tonight from this program. So you can stay in touch with Pooja and you can you know, order her ice cream in the future or go visit her shop if you're lucky enough to live in Brooklyn. Um, that being said, I think we're all settled in, so we should get going. I want to turn it over to Pooja Bavishi, who is standing by ready to make some chai with you and I'll be helping her out with questions, but you can feel free to chat your questions uh, in the chat box at any time. Take it away, Pooja. Thank you, Sari. I am so happy to be with you today, everyone. Um, I am Pooja. I am the founder and CEO of Malai Ice Cream. Um, and chai is my world, has been my world for a really long time. Um, so I'm so excited to be sharing a couple of recipes with you. Um, my mom's recipe for homemade chai, how to turn that into a really tasty chai float. Um, and then finally, how to make um, a cake using our masala chai ice cream. Um, just a quick overview of Malai. Uh, Malai is an ice cream company and we focus on South Asian inspired ingredients and flavors. Um, just flavors that I grew up with, which I was super nostalgic for. My parents immigrated here from India. And so I um, grew up with these spices that were super ubiquitous to me. And I wanted to make that um, really mainstream for a lot of people. And so um, decided to make it, to, to put them into something as Americana as ice cream. And um, so we have a shop in Brooklyn, we ship nationwide, um, and we are at grocery store locations around the country as well. Um, a quick thank you to Sari and to MoFAD for having me today. This is a really exciting class. I have taught many classes before, but never one specifically on chai. And so this is, this is specifically very important to me and this topic is very near and dear to my heart. So I'm really excited to be here. Just a quick, a couple of housekeeping notes. Um, I'm gonna be demoing every recipe if you're cooking along with me um, and you have any questions, just drop it into the chat box. Sari's gonna field any questions to me. And if, if there are questions that we already, um, already like, have answers to, we'll respond right away. Um, and that's the best way to kind of um, get your questions answered. Um, we'll be doing it in real time. So don't feel like we're, we're going to get to all of your questions. Um, and the second, uh, you know, I, this is this is ice cream. This is chai. This is not, you know, anything super serious. Feel free to keep your cam cameras on, cook alongside with me. If you see something that I'm doing that you're not doing there, we can chat about it. So really just the more interactive, the more I see your faces, the better. I just, I love knowing who I am talking to. So let's get started. So the first recipe that I'm gonna show you is actually masala chai. Let's just talk about chai for a second. So chai means tea. Masala chai means spiced tea. So if you ever see anyone or hear anyone say chai tea, what they're saying is tea tea. Okay, so let's just, everyone should get that in their vernacular <laughs> that they shouldn't say chai tea. It's really, chai means tea and tea could mean anything. In India, the tea that we think of when we hear chai is called masala chai. Um, funny enough, like masala chai is just, you can find so many different recipes throughout any single family in India. And the reason for that is, is that it's just a personal dish. It's something that everyone makes at home. You make it to your liking, you make it with different kinds of milk, you make it with different kinds of spices, you sweeten it, you unsweeten it. It's, it's so many different variations. And what I've also come to find is that even the process of making it 
varies from family to family. And so what I'm going to show you is how my family makes jai. This is my mom, my grandmother, all of my aunts, even my dad when he feels like it, but he really thinks that my mom's jai is the best jai in the world. Um, and so everyone in my family makes it this way, but here's the fun fact, no one I know, no other Indian American, Indian, no one I know outside of my family makes jai this way. So keep that in mind when we're making it because it's just so individualized. So to get started, I have my water here. I have two cups of water. Um, and so really I have them, you have all the measurements um, given to you. So you know how to kind of, um, kind of um, the different ratios of things. But really what I like to really keep in mind is that for every cup of water, you need one third cup milk. And so what I like to do is I like to, here's an empty cup even though I have like proportions in the recipe, I just base it off of the cup size that I'm using. So this is my cup size. If I fill it up all the way with water, then I am going to take a third of that cup size to fill it with milk. But of course we can just use regular cup measurements for that, but just to personalize it a little bit, that's the best way that I know how to do it. And that will give you one cup of chai because we are going to boil down the water as well as boil down the milk. So, as this water heats up, we're going to add three really important ingredients. The three ingredients are going to be sugar, <laughs> that's very necessary, chai masala, which means chai spices, as well as ginger. This is a very ginger heavy chai. Um, so what I'm going to do, if you have your chai masala, can anyone, that really, smell it. but if you have your chai masala, this is, this is what we're using. This is, again, a family recipe, so, this is my grandmother's recipe for chai masala. It's ginger, cardamom, black pepper, cloves, and cinnamon. Those are the five main ingredients in here. If we were in India, we would also add long pepper, but that's a little bit difficult to source here. So I actually just upped the black pepper to add that heat. Like I said, very ginger heavy, very family oriented. There's so many chai masalas that adds a little bit of fennel seeds, some saffron, some even add some turmeric. You can go any route that you wanna go with this. Um, and like adjust proportions accordingly. Um, to me, this is the only thing that tastes like chai, <laughs> like nothing else, no other combination of spices tastes like chai to me just because it is so deeply rooted in family. So I'm gonna take this, open this up and add just a half a teaspoon, the fourth teaspoon, I'm gonna do two of these in here. I'm also going to add my sugar. So I just, a tablespoon is about right for one cup. This is two cups. So I'm just going to add a little bit more about like a regular uh, kitchen spoon. I do about four, but like if we're doing an actual measurement, it'll be about two tablespoons, which sounds a little bit sweet, but with those spices kind of being really potent in here, you do want to balance it out with a little bit of sweetness. Otherwise that is going to taste a little bit spicier than you'd want it to. I'm also going to take this piece of ginger root um, and just slice it directly in here, like so. Very easy. This is a little, it's a little dangerous, you know, but <laughs> you're gonna just, we only live once is what I say. This is how my mom does it. She never uses a cutting board. And so I feel like you can't when you're making chat. I'm gonna lower the heat a little bit. But this is exactly what we wanna see. We do want everything to boil together um, because that is what's going to meld all the spices together. And in that I have this two thirds cup of milk because I'm making two cups of chai here, two thirds cups of milk that I'm gonna pour right in. So this is what's a little controversial. So my mom likes to add the tea directly in here and let it come to temperature kind of let it heat up with the tea. I like to, the milk to boil. I think that it, it's nice to have a little bit of a cooked milk taste to it. So I wait until that milk boils before I add my tea in and let my tea boil with the milk. Um, and you'll see that in a second. That's exactly how I'm gonna demonstrate it. Um, but while we wait for that, I do wanna note that chai is the reason why I started Malai. Like that is the exact reason why I started Malai. I grew up, being obsessed with chai in a way that was 
kind of weird. <laughs> I would, I would go like my parents would have chai at the at the breakfast table every single morning, and I would kind of walk from my mom to my dad and just ask to smell it. It's like this intoxicating sweet, like kind of bitter from the from the tea notes, spicy, like all of these notes all at the same time in this like milky richness that I was just super obsessed with. I love the smell of chai. I loved how that made me feel. It made me feel super warm and cozy. Um, and that's kind of what I think of when I think of home. I think of the chai smell and I think of this other sound that I'm about to tell you about too. But that chai smell is really like what made me think of how like how these flavors are not really well known in the main, in main, this mainstream food world. And so that's what I really wanted to showcase. Hey, so this, yes. How, how old were you when you made chai for the first time? That's a really good question. I was probably about 10 or 11 when I made chai for the first time. Um, but then I started making chai a lot on my own in high school. I would make it every single day. Um, and that's what really perfected my recipe. I will say I lived in India for a little bit and, and that I learned a lot about the differences of making chai at that point and then like kind of tweaked then. But, um, but my family recipe I learned as a child just because I needed to have some. And I started drinking chai at a very young age. I started drinking it probably around three, um, not like a full cup. My mom would mix it with some milk. Um, but that it, I was just obsessed with those flavors. It was more about the flavors than it was about the caffeine, but I don't know. I don't know if that was good for me. <laughs> anyway, um, if we want to look at the milk, you can see it's going to start boiling. And what I like to do at this point, like I said, chai is so personal. You can, you can adjust it to your taste when at, like however you want to. So I just like to give it a little bit of a stir and I like to taste it at this point. And adjust anything as necessary. I actually, I think that that's great. It's the perfect amount of sweetness. It's the perfect amount of spice. So like I, I, I would just leave it as is, but often what I do is I, um, I underestimate the amount of sugar I need because I can always add it on top at that point. So, and adjust it to, to taste. The other thing is, is if I'm making chai for more than one person, like I always like to think about, did I add too much? Did I add too little? So you can adjust at this point. I know in my recipe, I also added that um, mint leaves are optional. I love mint leaves in here. At this point is when you want to add the mint leaves. They get a little bit of this bitter rancid note if you add them in the water. But if you add them in the milk right when the milk's about to boil, which is doing right now, you get that really nice freshness of the mint without getting kind of like that wilted leafy taste. So you can see that the milk has started to boil. And what I'm going to do, again, this is the measurements you have. I'm just going to do it by eye. I'm just going to take this tea and I'm just going to show you really quickly that this is CTC tea, which is curl trim cut. Um, it's, it's a very common, to me, it's the only type of tea that you should use for an authentic chai. Um, you can find it, obviously you can find it online. Um, you can find it at any um, Indian grocery store as well. Um, but that is the tea to make chai. And then what I like to do is just watch it. As it boils, I just like to stir it around like this. You can, you know, just like so many different recipes passed down from generation to generation. Um, you know, I wasn't given proportions when I was being taught how to make chai. I was told things like it should taste like this. The color should be this. And so the chai, I was always told that it should be a really dark caramel amber color. Um, and that's when you know that it's done. So usually they'll take one or two boils as soon as you put the tea in. And, um, and then you'll see that color come in. Again, if you don't see it come through, then um, you can always just add a little bit more chai, um, a little bit more tea, <laughs> sorry breaking out my Gujarati. <laughs> Sorry about that. So this is what it looks like. Does any, is anyone making it along with me? Have, do you have any questions? I think we're, we're good so far. There's been some questions in the chat about um, the, the first five ingredients you used, but I think we covered that. It was, it was ginger, black pepper, cardamom, cinnamon, and cloves, right? 
Correct. Exactly. Yep. Okay. And people are really excited about using the mint leaves. Um, can you talk about, here's a few questions actually, they're, they're like flooding in now. Can you talk a little bit more about CTC and what you would use as an alternate? Yeah, you can use your favorite tea. The tea leaves are not going to give that same bitterness, that same tannic quality that CTC will, because this is a more potent substance. Um, it's good, like, think about like coffee grounds, right? Like that, that's kind of what we're getting with, with this tea. Um, you, my mom, when she first came to the States and she couldn't find like Indian stores were not as common. Um, she would take Tetley tea bags, open them up and dump them in instead of using authentic CTC tea. That is, that is a really good equivalent to CTC. Um, but it is very commonly found these days. Like even I've even found it in regular grocery, like regular American grocery stores as well. Um, so I, I don't think it's that difficult to find at this point. Um, but that this is the color that we do want to kind of go for. You can see that it's boiling. It's like this really nice amber, like this deep caramelly color. And I'm just going to let it come up to a boil. It, it, I mean, it is boiling. And then I will take it off the heat. I'm actually gonna move my induction burner out of the way. And then I, I have- wanna, Sorry, Pooja. I just wanna remind yeah. everyone that the, the recipes were included um, in, the, in the email that you got as the confirmation that I sent today. And I, and I also sent recipes to everyone periodically. I'll include them again tomorrow in a follow-up email um, we, we don't have the exact recipe of your spice blend, right? Right, Pooja, because it's proprietary. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But, um, but spice blends are like really easy to put together. Again, it is so based on your own preferences and anything goes. Right, but the actual chai recipe was included yes, in the 100%. emails you got and I will send them again tomorrow. And there was a question also about um, buying your, your spice blend, which is sold out right now. It is sold out right now, but we're hoping to have it back in stock by March. So I, um, I just strained out the tea, the, the big chunks of ginger. I just strained all of that out and, and put it in this teapot. Um, and then this teapot's actually kind of special to me too. My mom has had this teapot, this kind of teapot for ever, for the longest time. Um, and I, she would make jai every single morning. And when she was done making jai, she would close it like this. And I would hear it anywhere in the house. And um, I knew that it was time for breakfast. It was time to start the day. And so like for me, this teapot and that sound and that clank is just as like nostalgic to me as the actual chai. Um, but I have my own now. <laughs> so I'm just gonna pour out this chai. And so that's what it looks like. I don't know if you can see it, but it's like this beautiful color. Um, it's the perfect ratio for me to milk, milk to water, which you don't want it too milky. You want it to be a little bit on the thinner side. Um, and then, you know, the sweet level, the, the spiciness level, it is so up to you, but you have the recipe for how I like it and how my family grew up with it. But that's, that's like basically my family in a cup right there. I hope that some of you made it alongside with me. Um, I will say that we use this exact same recipe for our masala chai ice cream. And so that is like the most authentic to me um, ice cream. And just a little fun story is that Jai is like always had, like you always drink it hot. There's no, like you don't drink it cold. There's no ice chai. <laughs> There's nothing like that. And so, um, and like you find like Jai Wallas, which are like people who make teas like street side in offices. Like you just, you, everyone makes it fresh and hot all day long. Um, and so what's really funny is that my family, my extent, my immediate family who are obviously like so supportive, but also my extended family, who is also extremely supportive of me and Malai, um, do not like my chai ice cream because it's not hot, <laughs> interestingly enough, because they believe that chai should always be at hot. So there you go. So this is chai. Um, and this, I'm going to take a sip. If I, if you, can I answer any questions before I move on to a chai flow? Yes, we have quite a few questions. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, what area of India is your family from? Do you think there's regional similarities or is it just family specific? 
I actually, so my family is from Gujarat, which is the Western part of India. It's the state above the state where Bombay is. So Bombay is in Maharashtra and Gujarat is right above that. Um, I actually think it is family to family. I would, I would have disagreed with my own statement just a couple of years ago, but kind of being like, you know, immersing myself in the food industry and getting to know more and more people, I have realized how family specific chai, specifically chai is. Um, it's just, it depends on like what your own traditions are and how you grew up. Um, so, so yeah, it is, it is really family specific. Um, chai ha it is consumed kind of all over India, but coffee is too. So it is also a lot of families don't drink chai. They drink coffee instead of chai. So like there, there is that as well. Great. Um, someone asked why you added water first and then milk later or right after rather than at the same time. So you want the spices and the, so you want the sugar to melt in the water and you want the spices to be really incorporated into that water before you add the milk. Because the milk, you, you won't get that same kind of cooked sugar taste if you add the milk right away. And the reason why we do want to let that milk come to a boil is that you also want a cooked milk taste. But when you mix it all together and then let it come to a boil, you know that you, everything's well incorporated. Everything has that nice caramelly spice flavor and it won't mix the same way if you put everything in at the same time. Great. Um, are there any brand names of the CTC that you recommend? Yeah, I, I always get Vag Bakri. That's W-A-G-H-B-A-K-R-I. Um, it's in an orange bag. <laughs> um, and it's probably the number one tea company. Um, there's also Tata, T-A-T-A, -T -A, that's very popular. Um, but any one of them will be fine. It's just, I'm, I'm brand loyal to Vag Bakery. Thanks. Um, someone asked about the, the recipe that I sent. Um, I just sent kind of like a, a generic one that I found on the internet. Um, so that wasn't Pooja's recipe for the actual blend. Um, but someone asked, are you supposed to toast spices um, in advance? When you make yeah, it. so toasting spices will always bring out the flavor. Um, and so it's really good to kind of toast spices. If you have whole spices, so something like a ginger, it's very, it's not very common to find it whole, but you'll find mostly just ground ginger. So you don't need to toast that before including that into a blend. But something like fennel seeds, if you wanted to add fennel seeds to a spice blend, that's, that's a whole seed. You will want to toast that before kind of grinding it and putting it into your blend just because it'll bring out those flavors. The oils will start working and, and they'll, they'll just taste more fennel-y. It'll taste just better. Um, so, so yes and no. Cardamom, it's in a pod. So you want to, you don't want to toast that. Um, what other spices do we use? Cloves. So cloves are usually a little bit oily. Um, and so no need to, to um, toast those either because they'll, they'll just actually make it a little bit messy. So cloves, you don't need to toast. Cinnamon sticks, you don't need to toast. Um, but like, what other common spices are there? Black peppercorns, you could if you wanted to. They're so spicy on their own that I don't feel the need to. Um, and so I actually just add them in whole, grind them, um, and, and um, incorporate them into my spice mix like that. I would say that the most common um, ingredient that I actually don't use in my spice blend is fennel seeds. I see a lot of spice blends with fennel seeds and that's a great one to toast before. Perfect. Um, if someone wanted their chai to be thicker, uh, how would they do that? Condensed milk or letting it simmer longer? Add more milk. So the proportion to milk to water will change. So like I said, my dad, um, my dad lives for my mom's chai. <laughs> he thinks that my mom's chai is the best in the world. But if he makes it, he does half and half. He does half water, half milk, one to one ratio. Um, and so his chai is thicker. Um, and so, yeah, you can always just adjust it that way. I, I think that like half and half is probably the, the most milk you want in there because you won't get that same kind of spice potency if you have more milk than water. Yeah. And any kind of milk that you recommend or? Any milk. I use 2%. That's just what I have always, but I use the same exact proportions for whole milk and 1%. I wouldn't recommend um, doing the same proportions for skim milk. I would actually increase the milk to water ratio there. Um, Non-dairy, same proportions. Perfect. Okay. I think we're good for right now. Thanks, Pooja. Yeah. Okay, cool. So here we have our cup of chai, and then we are going to turn this into a chai float, which is 
a delicious thing. So here we have another cup. And what I like to do for a chai float is I like to take a scoop of ice cream. Here I have Malai's toasted nutmeg ice cream. Um, you know, it's available in store, but it was our seasonal for last, last month. It was a holiday seasonal, but it's delicious in chai. I, I love masala chai ice cream with the chai float. I love our, um, our sweet milk ice cream with the chai float. All of those are so good. Um, and so I'm just gonna scoop a little bit of this ice cream directly onto the into the bottom of the cup. And I'll show you what that looks like. I like to always go for a scoop and a half. It wants to come out and it does. Here we go. And just a quick tip on scooping, on scooping ice cream. Whenever you're scooping ice cream, you wanna go around the pint like this instead of down. Um, Cause you know, like when you get kind of those ice crystals that are not so appetizing on ice cream, the reason for that is that you have ice cream that's kind of sticking up, um, exposing it to air. And so if you keep it a, a flat surface all the time, then it won't expose as much and they'll make sure that it'll say, it'll taste as fresh as possible for as long as possible. So that's in the cup. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna pour the chai onto the side of the mug here. Um, and the reason for that is we don't wanna pour it directly on top. That will just immediately melt the ice cream. So we're just instead just pouring it towards the, uh, towards the side. And then it already floated to the top, but that is our chai float and it is amazing. This is also very not traditional, <laughs> but it's delicious, so who's counting? <laughs> so this is, this is our chai and our chai float. Two recipes in one, super easy. Um, and yeah, so that, that's two recipes down. Any questions on the chai float? Um, what I think we, we don't have, it, there's like a delay on the, on the oh. chat. Um, but oh, if okay, you want to, okay. if you want to talk about like where to get your ice cream, like that might be helpful for people who haven't, haven't been able to get to Brooklyn or order 100%. it. Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah. So we, um, we are located in Brooklyn. Our, our flagship location is in Brooklyn, but we do ship nationwide and we ship every single week. And so we are always here for you. So what we do is the website, Alexis um, from our team just um, texted the out, messaged it out where you can reserve pints. We do six pints, four pints. We do specialty items like cakes and we have holiday boxes and you know different seasonal flavors as well. So all available and we're always rotating but we do ship nationwide one to two days and it'll get to you. And then if you are, if you do live in California, in the New York, New Jersey area, kind of up towards Boston, um, we are in, in grocery stores as well. So you can always just go to our website, malai.co um, and click the find us button. And um, you can just enter in your zip code to see where the closest grocery store is to you. So those are probably the two easiest ways to get our ice cream if you don't live in Brooklyn. but do stop by if you do <laughs> we're getting we're getting just not really questions but like good feedback on oh, the float good on right the chai float yeah um okay great i didn't get to tell you before that your ice cream is my favorite ice cream no i didn't know that yeah it's true <laughs> um so and i just stumbled upon i mean i'm lucky enough that i live in brooklyn so i can eat your ice cream whenever but i stumbled upon your shop um in cobble hill and I was just so like blown away, you know, by the different flavors, because obviously they're they're different than what you see in most ice cream stores and even more blown away by the taste is incredible. How do you come up with your ice cream flavors? Like I know a lot of the inspiration is just from like traditional Indian ingredients, but how do you conceive of such cool different combinations? Yeah, I would say that it's actually, you know, I, I think that we have a huge amount of ingredients to work with just already right there. There's so many, like there's there's no shortage of ingredients that, that come from that region. Uh, so that's really exciting, but really I am just pulling from my memories and nostalgia, I would say. Um, like, I, I think that like, 
it's really cool to think about how these flavors have never been presented before. So a good example, our most popular flavor is our rose with cinnamon roasted almonds. Um, and rose flavored ice cream is something that I grew up with. It's, it's very, um, it's just, it's very common. You can find it at every Indian grocery store. Um, you can also find it at every single Indian dinner party <laughs> or you could in the eighties or nineties when I grew up. Um, but um, it's just, it's, it's a flavor that is super common to me. And so I really very much wanted to create a rose ice cream, but wanted to combine it with things that it had never been combined with before. So like present it in a completely new way. Um, and that's where we started experimenting with like cinnamon, almonds and, you know, things like that. And really like adding a big hit of salt. Indian sweets are really known to be super sweet. So I wanted to like kind of take that away from that. But it's really fun. Like it's really fun to conceptualize new flavors. We're working on a really fun box that's debuting on March 1st. And it's it's just directly from what I remember about different desserts and smells. And like I said, sounds even like every single thing that kind of we think about like it's kind of in our arsenal of memories, but are, is not really in the forefront. It like forces me to kind of think about these things that have become so commonplace for me, but people, other people may not know about it, right? And so I think that that's what's really exciting about it and really introducing so many people to new flavors and giving other people kind of a nostalgic feel for something that they've known, but presented in a different way. Yeah, I, I just think it's so, I love what you do so much. And like, obviously I'm such a fan and I just feel like Indian desserts are like such an underrepresented market. So I'm, I'm so happy that you're out there. Um, Cause there's obviously like Indian restaurants all over the United States, but I feel like the, like the desserts, you know, like people don't really have like an understanding and a vocabulary yet for different flavors that you are you, introducing. Like when I went into, um, you know, the shop, I remember seeing jaggery and being like, oh, you know, like I only had just heard about jaggery and it's like yeah. mind blowing because obviously like India is massive and there's like millions and millions of Indian people in the world. And yet for some reason, like that category hasn't like made headway yet really in the United States. Yeah, but I think that what you just said is um, is really important that India is massive, right? And so I'm just, I'm not trying to represent all of India by any means. I'm not actually even trying to represent India. What I'm trying to represent is the way I grew up. And the way I grew up is this very hybrid lifestyle of being Indian and being American and growing up in North Carolina and like, you know, and like kind of combining these flavors that I love and that I, it was just like, it was a part of my everyday life um, and introducing it to as many people as possible. And like, yes, I think that there's a lot of connection, but what I actually love most is when, when someone has like no seeming connection to what I'm doing and they can still find a memory associated with that. That is like one of my most favorite thing. And I think that that's something, you know this, Sari, like you, this is something that can like really only happen through food. And I, that's what I love about being in this industry. Yeah, and I mean, Total, like 100%. And I, and I love that you said that too, because like Indian food is obviously not monolithic. And I think that like a lot of the ways that like Americans think about it, it's like, this is what Indian food is because that's what like a lot of the Indian restaurants in the United States have very similar menus. So I appreciate the fact that like you're bringing in new ingredients and flavors. Cause I think that that then inspires curiosity. And then like that just promotes like personal education. And you, you've definitely done that for me. I've been like, what is this? Oh, like, I, I need to know more about it. And like, it just expands my understanding of like, you know, not what Indian food is, but what like specific ingredients and like regionality is. So you're, you're kicking butt. <laughs> uh, thank you. Yeah. And I actually just saw a comment pop up saying I'm from South Africa, which is also, like, I think that like, that's an, another really important point that like the diaspora is actually very, very large as well. And so what I love hearing is like, oh, cool, like, you did it this way. And this is how we do it, you know, and like, and it's just so it's, it's such an education for me as well that like, I love hearing about the different variations. Like I said, that Jai itself is so family specific, but even like calling desserts different things. I, I have a colleague here who has who is from Trinidad and one of like one of the things that they wanted to introduce is so deeply rooted in Indian culture and like it's just so interesting to me that like we're doing very different things but ended up for this one specific holiday ended up kind of doing the same thing and I that's just the diaspora and I love that 
And so I, I just like love looking at the variations and, and learning myself. Um, there was a few questions about the Madam Vice President ice cream okay. chat. Alexis Field fielded the question about like what it is specifically, like what the ingredients are. But I think it would be fun if you could just share, just share with everyone what you did there. Yeah. And so, okay. Well, I mean, I there's this there doesn't really need an explanation, but I was really happy when <laughs> when um, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris became our next president and vice president. And like that that Saturday in November truly was like this. We, I was at the shop. I, I happened to be at the shop that day and we found out and people started reading cowbells outside. And like, that was the most celebratory I have ever seen our street, Smith Street in Brooklyn. It was just, our block had a DJ and like people were dancing on the streets and honking their car horns and like waving American flags. And it was just in, this incredible energetic feeling that I just like, I will never forget it. And it was that day that I was like, I need to create a, a, an ice cream for honoring Kamala. Obviously, like, obviously Kamala is half Indian. Like that is something that is so meaningful for me and like just seeing that representation. But like, it was like kind of the combination of that and seeing the energy on Smith Street that I was like, you know, people are ready for this. People are really want something like this. And so it actually took me quite a while to like kind of conceptualize a flavor because I wanted to do her justice like I wanted to do her roots justice so she's not only Indian but her roots are also coming from Jamaica which is you know the West Indies so she's East and West Indian and we wanted to I wanted to kind of focus on flavors that were really common at, in both areas so coconut it's a coconut mango ice cream base but really specific to Madam Vice President herself um, Kamla in Sanskrit means lotus and so I wanted to just give a nod to her name. And so we sourced lotus seeds and we did um, jaggery candied lotus seeds and like put some shredded coconut in that and folded that into the ice cream. And the response, like truly the response has been so incredible. No, she does not know about it, unfortunately. But- um, You have to I, send her some. <laughs> I know, like if anyone knows how to do that, that would be- <laughs> You know how to do that. If you're friends with Kamala, Pop put it, it in the, the chat. Messages. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but I, I, I think the response really just moved me as well because it's just like people are so ready to celebrate in a, in in an era that we live in where we can't celebrate. Um, and so it was nice to be able to give people a way to do that. And so like I, it was our most successful flavor launch to date. Like people were really all over it and it was really exciting to see. Um, and it was mo like the most meaningful part for me was that people wanted to support not only like, a, you know, not only the fact that like we're shattering glass ceilings with, with Kamala Harris becoming vice president, but also in turn supporting a woman of color owned business. And, and that really was meaningful for me. Thanks. That's amazing. Um, just one more quick question. What did your family eat with chai in the afternoon? Ah, oh, it depends. So I am a chai and biscuits kind of girl. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not, so the most ubiquitous chai biscuit is a parlogy. Raise your hand if you know what a parlogy is. It's basically the, the British brought over tea culture to India when they colonized India. And so there's a lot of British tea biscuits that still are on store shelves there. And they're very, very common. I, for one, am a digestives girl. Um, and so I very much eat digestives, which I, any chance I get. Um, but the Parlaji is, is like the most famous Indian brand of tea biscuits. Um, and so we, every so often, every couple of months, we debut our Parlaji and Masala Chai ice cream sandwiches, which people go crazy over just because it's such a ubiquitous tea biscuit. That said, I, so there's that, there's a sweet side. So that's what I like for sweet. My mom will never go for sweet. My dad is like me, he'll go for either or depending. And so the other big one that we have is um, a snack, like a snack mix um, called a chevda or chevdo. Um, which is just a mix of crunchy things, really. Um, Namkeen is another word for it. There's just so many different words for it, but um, you know, I'm gonna stick to what I know. <laughs> but there's there's one in, in particular that has like this flattened rice flake with peanuts and um, like dried dal and curry leaves. And it's a little sweet and it's a little salty and it's perfect with chai, it's a little spicy. Um, and that's what I love with chai. Honestly though, I can, 
I can very much have anything with Jai, but that is a good point to your um, question asker because you do need to have something with Jai. You can't just have Jai on its own. Okay, that sounds good. Um, great, should we, should we move on to cake? Let's move on to cake. Okay, so let me grab my bowl here. Can you see that? Okay. So I, I thought a really fun thing um, to do with chai is a melted, a melted ice cream cake using our masala chai ice cream, which is right here. Um, I I thought of that mostly. I mean, this is not this is not like a recipe that is new in any way, like using um, melted ice cream and self-rising flour and sticking that into the oven. Like that is something that has been done for a while. Um, but I, I think that there's like a couple of tweaks that make this better. We add a little bit more sugar, which is necessary. We add some fat to it, which is also necessary. Um, and then the spices of the ice cream really shine through here. So like that's, it's just a cool way to showcase ice cream in a baked good form. So what you need, you already have the recipe for this as well, um, but what you need to get started is, I'm gonna put two tablespoons of coconut oil in my bowl, along with a fourth of a cup of sugar. The very first thing that you wanna do though, is that you wanna um, melt your ice cream. So I'm like holding this very carefully because there's melted ice cream in here. Um, I will note that um, you don't want to just put this in the refrigerator. You want room temperature melted ice cream. The reason for that is that this is going to, this mixture right here, if it is, if the ice cream is cold, it will just freeze up and form solids in there. So you do want a little bit of a warm temperature, room temperature ice cream. So here is my melted ice cream. You'll see like the foam because ice cream has air in it that rises to the top and I'm gonna pour it right in. Who's just someone's Remember asking- Remember when I was talking about- Oh, I'm sorry. Someone was asking if they can skip the extra sugar. Yeah, totally. You can totally skip the extra sugar. Um, yeah, I, I think that it, it lacks a little bit of sweetness if you don't have that sugar, but 100%. Um, but remember how that, I, that icy texture that ice cream often gets when you, when you it's sitting in the freezer for too long, this is a great way to use this up too, to like kind of bring that to temperature and, um, and put it into this cake because it's going to bake into a great cake without like, with, without like that iciness that's going to melt away. So this is this is a good way to like kind of use old ice cream. I'm I'm sad to say, in in case you don't want to melt a pint of ice cream. So this is this, <laughs> and I'm going to add in some salt. Like I said, salt is necessary in everything, as well as baking powder. Um, like I said, this, the original recipe for this was just self rising flour and a pint of ice cream. So instead of self rising flour, which I don't, I don't typically have in my pantry. Um, I just created my own by adding baking powder to regular flour. Um, and I'm actually gonna switch to a whisk here. I don't have a hand, okay. Just to make sure everything's well incorporated. And then, all we need to add after this is a cup and a half of all purpose flour, which I'm just gonna add right in. So it's super easy. It comes together so quickly. Um, it's all ingredients that I feel like everyone kind of has already. Just a quick note on the coconut oil. I will say that um, this does add a little bit. It's this, what I used is an unrefined coconut oil. So it does have a little bit of a coconut flavor. If you don't want that, just use refined coconut oil and you'll be fine. You can always, always substitute butter or oil or like regular canola oil as well. Um, and so I'm just gonna mix this together and I can already, I can like, this is the perfect way to kind of 
use those spices that are in the ice cream and turn it into a baked good because all I can smell here is like that ginger and the cardamom and everything. And I don't need to add that separately. It's already done for me. Who does that? So once it comes together in a coat. Sorry. Um, was that all, that's all purpose flour that you used? It's all purpose flour. Yep. Thank you. And it was um, masala chai ice cream that I use, but you can use any flavor of ice cream that you want. Even like vanilla ice cream, sweet milk ice cream, like any of those will be great in this. Obviously the flavor profile changes a little bit, but whatever you want to use. My favorite ice cream that we carry is our orange fennel. And so I love that in this. So once it comes together, I'm just going to take a standard loaf pan like this. Um, and I'm actually just going to spray it with some cooking spray. I've already preheated my oven to 350 degrees. And I pour this right in. Like that. And you're going to bake it for about 30 to 35 minutes. You'll just do a regular cake tester test by sticking in a toothpick and if it comes out clean, um, it is good to go. I will say that um, because of the ingredients in here, um, it will look a little bit, when it's baking, it'll look a little bit un underdone when it's not. So just keep that cake tester near nearby and um, just to test it so you don't want to over bake it. So this will go into the oven and I have one already done. <laughs> this is what it looks like. Amazing. <laughs> Yeah, so that's, so what I'm talking about, I don't know if you can see this, but like right along there, it kind of looks like wet dough when it's not. So like that is done and the cake tester did come out clean, but even though it does look wet and obviously when it's hot, it looks even more wet. And so that is something to just keep in mind. You don't want to over bake this. Um, and then we make our glaze. So here I have a cup of powdered sugar for extra credit, you can sift it. <laughs> I don't like to, so I'm not going to. Um, it does make a smoother glaze, so just keep that in mind. Um, I, I already added some salt in here as well. And what I'm going to add to this is our chai mix, our chai masala, just like a fourth of a teaspoon to a half teaspoon, whatever you feel um, is to your liking, to your taste. Um, if you don't use masala chai ice cream, for example, you can, you know, you can stick in whatever you feel like. Some cinnamon would be great, some cardamom. I've bloomed some saffron before and stick it in there. It's, it's really great that way. Um, but basically you just want to complement whatever flavor you have in, in, the, in the ice cream part of the bread. Um, and so that will just make it taste great. And so I'm just gonna mix this with a fork and what I have somewhere here, oh, back here, is a fourth of a cup of cream. And so I'm just going to whisk, whisk that in. And it's going to be a pretty thick glaze, which is what I want. And just start slow and it'll start coming together. Can you see that it's starting to come together in this like beautiful glaze. And I can start to smell Mostly I can just start to smell the um, black pepper that is in there. It's looking a little bit thick to me. So again, this is another one of those things that it's going to be kind of adjust as necessary. You can certainly use it as is, but I want it a little bit thinner. So I would add a little bit more cream at this point, but because I'm a little bit far from my refrigerator, I'm just going to add some chai that's right here next to me. Ah, oh, what a great hack. <laughs> and continue to whisk that in. Basically, you just need liquid, whether that's, you know, cream, milk, water even, um, to get the consistency you want. So this chai will get us there. So what I'm going to do, where should I put it? There we go. Just pour this. I'm going to pour it right down the center because then it'll drizzle in all directions. And then you're just gonna let that hard set, which it will do in just a little bit. Pour it right over the whole thing. 
And that is a melted ice cream masala chai cake <laughs> right there. I'm gonna cut into it so you can see what a piece looks like. I would normally let this sit a little bit um, for the glaze to set, but in the interest of time, I'll just, do you see that? It's like a quick bread meets cake deliciousness with lovely glaze, all very chai heavy, all very delicious. <laughs> Did anyone try that with me? Yeah, we, we definitely have some people trying with you. I was just thinking that Zoom really needs to like figure out how to add a like a smell function. <laughs> That'd be lovely. <laughs> I mean, it could be, it could also go very badly. <laughs> but it looks delicious. Um, thank you so much for doing that. Someone's asking, oh, someone where someone's asking again, how how can you get the spice blend if you want to repeat that for people who aren't in New York? Yes, well, so the spice blend is sold out right now, but we are, um, we will ship it nationwide again through our website once it becomes available again. We are hoping that it's going to become available again um, in March. We, we actually, one of our biggest, you know, just ethos and just values in general is to source sustainably. And so we work with Burlap and Barrel, which is this amazing spice company um, that sources really sustainably and really, um, you know, pays farmers fair wages and there are no middlemen when it comes to us getting our spices so we get the freshest spices possible so they had some supply chain issues um that have been kind of bad, kind of a holiday issue that has kind of come into the new year as well um, but we will always support them and so we're just waiting for for things to kind of slow down there um for our for us to get our chai blend again but um but yeah it, it what, what you're supporting by buying that chai blend is is that just like fair wages to farmers who work really hard. Yeah, and that spice company again is called Burlap and Barrel. Mm -hmm. um, maybe Alexis can just throw that in the chat. Someone was asking um, what what spirit to, I think this question was to me because someone was saying what spirit would I pair with the, from, from like, you know, behind <laughs> me. I'm like, I don't see any spirits behind you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I guess they're asking me and I'm happy to answer that question, but I would also Please love do. to hear what you would drink with your cake. <laughs> I personally would probably drink whiskey. I, I have a smoked maple whiskey on my Ooh. bar and I also have like a, a smoky Amaro. So I, I think either of those would be really, really good. Um, but yeah. I would love to hear what you would drink. No, I'll, I'll, that's the perfect answer. <laughs> okay, good. A little bit of pressure there. <laughs> um, the smoked maple, it's just, it's Knob, it's Knob Creek actually. And well, actually I have two. Um, Cause one I picked up in Canada last time I was there but the other one is Knob Creek. Um, okay, someone's asking again, what are the ingredients in the spice blend um, listed on Ginger, the- Ginger, black pepper, cardamom, cinnamon and cloves. Great. Um, and that was in the chat and just a reminder uh, I'm going to send everyone an email tomorrow and all the recipes from tonight will be in the email again. Um, and also you wanted to mention something about a giveaway, right? I, yes, yes. So thank you everyone for joining and I'm so excited to see what you're going to create. Um, Alexis, who's on the chat right now, part of our team, she's going to start, she's going to post about a giveaway um, about people posting about their recipes and, and what they're, what they learned about today. So Alexis, I'll let you put it into the chat box so everyone can enter. Great. Um, and I know some people were making the cake at home. We would love to, to see pictures. If you're, uh, if you have Instagram and you're making the cake, even if you do it later, please take a picture. Um, you should tag MoFad and we can reshare it. And that's just at MoFad. And um, I bet you would want to see it too, right, Pooja? Yeah, tag at Malai underscore ice cream as well. And we'll also reshare it. Good. And on in the email that I'll send you tomorrow, I'll make sure to have uh, every, every social media handle from from Malai in there and again we'll remind you how you can buy ice cream and spices and and everything that you could ever need to know I guess yeah this was so fun thank you everyone and if anyone has any more questions feel free to dm us we'll always get back to you but um I hope that these recipes are fun and easy and delicious and I hope you try them Thank you so much, Pooja. This was so much fun. It was just like the most cozy, fun way to spend a very cold January evening. 
Um, so I hope you come back to do another MoFad. Anytime, I would love to. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank good you.